Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe. And today is, is, is a really big day for me on all, all kinds of levels, but I'm thrilled to be back with you for part three of Build the Eagle 2 from Round 2 MPC. It's the 22 inch version we're working on. And also, uh, you're going to see some, some, a little, you might see some wacky stuff <laughs> happening during the show only because um, I'm now working with a, uh, a fully functioning studio here at Spruverse where we go live to tape. And I'm working on this so that down the road I can do live streams and uh, that should be uh, a lot of fun. But for now, it's really just to sort of streamline the editing process because uh, I, you know, you, you spend so much time in the editing bay and uh, when I had independent cameras, you know, I'm looking up here, I'm looking there and it was just a bit of a mess and it was not easy for me to, to, to cut. So, but anyway, uh, it, it's just, uh, if you notice me reaching over here uh, to my switcher, it's me getting used to it. It's kind of like a radio show, really. <laughs> That's what you're doing. You're kind of running your own radio show. But anyway, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to be having it because it'll allow me to concentrate on what's in front of me because I don't have to worry about whether or not it's in camera or on, in, in focus or, or, or anything like that. Um, so without further ado, uh, let us look at what we're doing here. Um, I am in the process of putting all these pieces uh, together. Now, as I've mentioned to you uh, earlier, uh, everything we do here is modular, right? So, and the reason why uh, I tell you that is because if you choose to tackle this model, uh, you're going to want to do everything uh, in, a, in a modular fashion, I promise you. Uh, you're going to be uh, so much happier for it. Um, and uh, we've been working on uh, getting rid of a lot of uh, the seams. There's been a lot of seams in this, uh, in this kit, uh, and I'm slowly sort of working on them. But I think for the most part, I've gotten rid of a lot of the seamage. Uh, so, so that's pretty good. I've got a little bit of clean up here. Do you see? Um, but once I get uh, a couple more coats of paint on this and I just make sure that this is super, super smooth, um, I should be fine. So I'm not too worried about that. Now, um, <clears throat> what I will be doing is I'm at a, pr I'm, 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 at, I'm, at, I'm actually at a place now, uh, where I will be, uh, actually getting ready to pre-shade everything. Um, if you, if you're only just checking out this particular, uh, uh, show. Uh, there are two before this, so you've, you've missed a little bit. Uh, I, and I really hope if you're interested in building this kit, you go back to the beginning and check it all out, because um, it'll make a lot more sense to you then. But anyway, um, and what I've done is everything was primed, and I've given everything a coat of the AS, which I guess S stands for spray. Here, I'll show you this. Uh, this is the... Um, uh, this is the Tamiya uh, AS Insignia White. There it is. And um, the reason why I like this particular uh, color so much, well, there's a couple of reasons, actually. The first time I actually really used it in a significant way was on my Diagostini Millennium Falcon. And uh, after it had been primed, it got, it got several coats of this. And I have to tell you, I was really impressed it dried really hard. It took washes beautifully. And it's the kind of color that has enough brown in it and enough of the, of the black and, and a little, you know, green and gray, depending on how well your eye sees color, to know that um, it doesn't look like a pure white, which I worry can look like plastic. But um, one of the great things about model building and one of the things that has always excited me about model building is the fact that the paint scheme um, is, is something that you can really spend an awful lot of time on and really do some amazing things with. So it's not just about the model looking like a real object. But it, uh, and not a toy, but it's also about how the eye sees it. So whether you're doing pre-shading uh, or whether you're doing some color gradation, you know, you don't just put one color on something. Well, you shouldn't just put one color on something because in, in nature, nothing is, is, is perfect. And, you know, vehicles, 
uh, if you look at any kind of vehicle, um, it has wear and tear and scratches and dings and bangs and, and it looks a little faded here and there depending on whether it's been garaged or in the sun or whether it's whatever it is, you know, in the rain. I mean, so many things affect objects that they shouldn't be one color, they should be several colors. And so that's one of the secrets to making your models look amazing is spending some time to look at things in real life and figure out what they look like. And um, it'll change the way you see everything. And I'll tell you, it's, it's interesting. When I really started paying attention was when I started oil painting. So I paint landscapes. And when you look at things in nature, you know, you start paying attention to what trees look like and rocks look like and water looks like and dirt looks like. And you see a million colors. It's, a, it's just awesome. And that's why some of the greatest landscape painters and painters, you know, their palette is extraordinary. And it's all of that different nuanced color that makes such a difference. But anyway, um, so the next step is we're going to do some pre-shading. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, let, me, let me show you what I mean by that. So we're going to take some, uh, in my case, I'm going to take some black paint. Now I'm using uh, this, this one. Um, I'm using the Model Air, which is the 710.57 black. Now, the reason why uh, I'm in love with that color is because for some reason, I do very well with it in my gun. I don't need to water it down very much, although I'm going to put a few drops of the thinner into it. Um, the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want my pre-shading to be you know, not, not super concentrated color, but I do want to get black in, in, in all these nooks and crannies. And, um, so when you, when you're really, uh, you know, th there's so many great opportunities in here, uh, to, to really get some, some, uh, some shading in here so that when I put on the next coat, which will be a white coat, uh, a couple of white coats, and I'm still trying to figure out which one that will be, but, um, uh, I, I will, um, I, you know, you'll, hopefully you'll see all of that pre-shading and obviously these will become permanently black. And then um, once I've, I've, I've sort of d gone through my pre-shading, that is when genius happens because you get a hold of Lou Del Masso's masks, Aztec dummy. If you don't know Lou, you need to. His masks are incredible. Um, and I don't just say that, uh, you know, because I'm paid to say that. I am not. I say it because as a media, uh, mediocre modeler, you know, and I'm always trying every day, I, I come to the, to the bench and I, I, and I just want to learn something and I want to get better and better. And whenever you have or find a great tool like paint masks, especially for something like uh, a spaceship, grab them. Because yes, you can absolutely do this yourself with masking tape. You absolutely can, and there's some really talented modelers out there who do, and they do just fine. And they're saying, no, thank you, I don't need to spend the money. And that's totally cool, and I respect that, and you keep doing what you're doing. But I only share some of the, 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 the tips that, that, that I feel have, have worked for me. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's that. So I've got some, some, some really um, um, fun things to do now. I've got a lot of painting to do. Um, I've got to get these, uh, these things. Uh, let me uh, show you these things. Um, I'm calling these uh, the um, a part of the cooling system for the, the hydrogen cooling system. That's what it looks like to me. They're, they're some kind of an energy flow thing. Anyway, um, they need to get a coat of paint as well. And I've got four of these feet and they are for the pod. They are uh, the feet for the pod. They're not the feet for the, uh, for the actual ship. Uh, they are larger feet for that. And uh, those larger feet will actually be, um, uh, I'll actually be using my um, upgrade kit. Um, and uh, here's, a, here's a piece of that, uh, which we'll get a spring and uh, let me show you how that's going to work. That spring will go in there like that and uh, away you go. And so uh, I've got 
um, I, I, I've made a lot of progress, but it also feels like things are a little stalled, but they're actually not. It's really that process now of getting things done. Oh, I, and I have a, um, I have a coat of gloss uh, here on um, the cockpit wall. Um, so that is going to be ready now for its final washes and it's going to be ready for some, some decals. Uh, and then I can put the guys uh, in that um, and that will be uh, ready to uh, close up. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're go I'm just going to go ahead and I'm, go I'm going to give some pre-shading to all of this. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen pre-shading. Most of you know what pre-shading is. For those who don't, it really is getting some black paint or some dark colored paint into the nooks and crannies and crevices of your model before you give it the next layer of paint. And the reason why that is a great idea is because it really gives you a super uh, sort of shading effect. Uh, and then of course, on top of that, we're gonna have all of the, gray, the gradations of, of, of grays and whites and some very light blues that will become the exterior of uh, paneling uh, that, that goes um, th that goes on uh, these uh, these pu these puppies right here, um, and um, everything, as I said, is modular, so everything comes apart, which is really terrific. So um, I just couldn't be happier with how this is all going together. Um, but again, now it's down to getting, you know, getting everything ready for paint and choosing some final paint, but that'll be after pre-shade. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pre-shade everything and show you what that looks like. Um, and uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. I thought we'd uh, actually do a little bit of um, on-camera uh, pre-shading. Why not? Um, <clears throat> And uh, we'll see whether this ends up in the in the final uh, product. But um, uh, I um, I was looking around here, and I've noticed on this particular uh, piece, I've got some gappage. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually uh, let me see if I can show you this because I think it's worth it. Um, it came together quite well, but you can see right here right there I've got some gappage and on the other side um, a little bit of gappage as well if you look at them front on uh, just a hair there uh, and a hair there uh, and if you go around the other side uh, you can see there's just a, a little bit of a, a little bit of gappage so what I'm going to do with this particular piece is um, I'm going to actually use uh, some micro crystal clear. You guys know this. So I'm going to use micro crystal clear and I'm going to get it in some of these nooks and crannies. And, uh, you know, just sort of um, uh, use this as a gap. A get a gap filler because um, it'll do a really good job and then all I need to do is just put a little bit more of the um, uh, of the insignia on this just to clean this up and um, what I like what I really like about this is is I can get it into all of the cra uh, all of the of the cracks here um, and and then I can wipe this up with water and I'm not causing an absolute mess for myself with with putties um, and, uh, so I'm just going to lay some of this on for you. Um, not, not necessarily for you. I would say it's more for me than you, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm going to get this in here and, uh, and then I'm going to go through it with a, a, a Q-tip and actually, uh, clean this up. Um, but in the past, what I probably would have done is try to putty this, and that's just a mitigated disaster because you literally cannot, uh, you, you just, you're gonna spend a lifetime trying to get it off, off of all of these seams. So why bother, right? So this is just a, 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 to me, this is just a smarter way to go. And you get a really good result. So um, we'll, we'll get this all filled in here. 
that looks pretty good i'm happy with that and then um just look to see here where are any of the gappages there's a little bit of gappage in there um well, i'm not on camera very good am i let's go to let's go to b and see what we can see um so yeah so i'm looking there i'm like i'm liking that um i'm gonna just push it in into here now what I found with this micro crystal clear is over time, it actually starts to coagulate a little bit. And that's not a terrible thing actually, because I found the coagulated version to be even more helpful when it comes to um, puttying up things and, and, and getting things uh, sealed up, um, especially when you're uh, in an in a overcoat or an undercoat situation like I am here. Okay. Um, I am really, that's good. Everything is, looks like it's, uh, oh, just a hair there. There. Okay. So then what I can do is I will get myself a Q-tip here, a couple of Q-tips. Pull out my Q-tip stash. And, uh, Now, this probably means nothing to you, but um, actually that's not true. It's not fair for me to say that. It means it might mean a lot to you, but um, to me personally, um, going to this live to tape production uh, is, is a game changer for me personally uh, because um, it, it allows me to, to actually spend more time modeling, if you can believe that, and less time worrying about cameras. And it started to really affect me in as much as, you know, you're chasing, oh, you've got to chase content. I mean, like in the past, I would have never have said, oh, let's do this on camera. I just wouldn't have done it. I would have said, oh, no, we're not doing that. That's it's just not going to happen because I've got to set it up, I've got to get the cameras rolling, I've got to do all that nonsense. And now I don't even think about it. Uh, that's how cool it is. Uh, I just do it. And so um, I get a lot more pleasure out of filming. And I think you guys will get a lot more pleasure um, out of seeing a little more of my, of my detail because um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to do this on camera with you guys as well. And uh, a person who's become a very good friend of mine, Lou, Lou Dalmaso, um, is, um, he is such a gentleman and he's uh, taken, he's gone out of his way to sort of help me learn um, how to be a, a better mo model maker. Um, and everybody needs a mentor, everybody needs a, a, a guru in their lives. And if you don't, find one because not only is the modeling community awesome, um, but uh, it's a great way for you to learn uh, tips and tricks. Yes, you can get an awful lot off of YouTube channel shows, but I find that the personal touch is the way to go because the personal touch um, is, is really uh, the way you build relationships and you learn, um, I, I, you, you learn how to uh, improve uh, some of your, your model making skills. And, and, and I think as we all learn um, uh, to do, to do a, a better job with our, with our skills, um, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna get better and better and we'll have more fun doing what we're doing and then we can tackle tougher things and different genres and different applications and, and work with resins and work with wood and work with all kinds of different things and um, just you know familiarize ourselves with those things and then uh, once we're familiar with those things they don't become such a uh, so much of a burden <laughs> to us um, and you know it's also it comes naturally to some people and to others like me, it doesn't come naturally. You know, I, 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 I'm a fast study, but um, I certainly do appreciate the guys who it becomes its second nature to, you know. Um, one of the incredibly skilled guys is a guy called Plasmo. If you've never seen his channel, go check him out. 
he is um, so talented, so talented, and um, mostly is in the aircraft and, and World War II stuff. I think he's, um, he's a young gentleman from, uh, from Czechoslovakia, I believe. He's, he lives in the Czech Republic. Um, but uh, wow, is he talented. And uh, it's such a pleasure to watch him. And um, if you want to learn how, uh, how to be patient or how to zero in on things, that's the guy you look to. Okay, so um, we're on. Everything's on and it's looking really good. It's looking really good. So I'm going to let this, uh, I'm going to let this dry now um, and uh, we'll be able to pre-shade this in probably in about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so I will definitely show you what that looks like pre-shaded because I'm going to get in all these nooks and crannies uh, and, and, and really go to town with it just to get some detail. But um, let us start with uh, these engine parts. Um, why not? We've got four of them and uh, here they are in all of their glory. And um, what I'm going to do is pre-shade them. And uh, I'm actually gonna pre-shade as much as I, as I can. I can do the nose um, and I can also uh, do the, uh, this cup here, uh, which is the, the, the rear of this, uh, of this spacecraft is what it is. Um, and now I've talked to you about this, this particular piece because um, in actual fact, it's friction fitted, uh, which means that um, you can actually go ahead and attach the rest of the ship to it, and this will stay semi-attached. And then if you want to look at the cockpit, you can just pull away the, the nose cone, and you'll be able to enjoy the, uh, all the work you've done on the cockpit. Um, so if you are going to do that, there's a couple of things you have to figure out is... Uh, how you're going to run your wires if you're going to wire this. Uh, perhaps using copper tape as a switch, uh, you can create a connection when the two are together and when it pulls apart, the light just goes out because it's, it's probably in the nose cone um, shooting, you know, shooting up at, at, these, uh, at, the, at the crew members, something like that. And there's a, um, there are several ways to do that. Um, anyway. Uh, if you're if you're lighting it, fortunately for me, uh, I am not <laughs> I'm not lighting it. Um, but we are going to pre-shade it, and so let us pre-shade. Um, I've got my airbrush here, and I'm using um, the uh, uh, here's here's what I'm using, which is uh, my go-to's. It's uh, my uh, Iwata Eclipse HP. Uh, and, uh, and I use a, uh, an, a, an air gap, and uh, that captures any moisture. Uh, don't really need it in the, the fall, but in the summer, it's a lifesaver because all that moisture is not getting into the gun. And the reason why you don't want moisture in this gun is because if you're running acrylics, um, they're going to gum up. Um, and working with acrylics can be a bit of a pain. Uh, a lot of guys like to work with the enamels and uh, use real proper solvent thinners because they get a better result. And it's all really personal preference. Some people love Tamiya, some people love uh, Vallejo, some people um, l like um, uh, s some of the other paints that are out there. You know, I can think of... Um, uh, well, there's a, a company um, here locally, a, a, actually, um, uh, whose name escapes me. But um, uh, oh, well, there's Comart, um, and th there's a bu there's a bunch of others. Um, interestingly enough, um, paint preferences is a huge thing. There's also uh, some guys who are using, um, like I uh, I know that. Um, uh, Boyd Crompton uses uh, actual automotive paint. He mixes himself. Uh, but there is a company uh, in Florida that actually sells uh, the kind of paint that he uses. Uh, it's an automotive paint. And what I'll do is actually I'll put a, a link in the description below to what that company is if you're interested in trying some of their paints. They're pretty good. Um, 
But I have found over the years that every paint you use, you got to start, obviously, you got to have their thinners. I know there's a lot of guys on the channels who say, oh, make your own thinners. It's, it's alcohol. It's this. It's that. It's water. It's, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, oh, it's, it's you know, some people use uh, Windex, you know, because um, it, it's obviously... Um, uh, it, it's 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 good for helping the paint paint uh, uh, run properly. But I have just found over the years that if you follow the um, the manufacturer's paint guidelines and use their thinners, and if you can, if you can afford to, uh, it's a, it, it's a it's a it's a much 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 better way to go. Anyway, okay. So um, I've got my my um, Vallejo. I'm going to get a little bit in the cup here. You don't need much. And in fact, what I'm actually going to do, because I can, is I'm going to thin it. And I thin it with this. Uh, it's um, it's their, their thinner. And uh, there's all, all kinds of other things you can thin with, I know. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I, 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 as I said to you, I, I'm a purist. I, I'm, I don't know. It's just who I am. Uh, it's personal preference. Uh, I will never tell you a right way or a wrong way because I believe there is no such thing. There is an A way. And the whole, the, the whole hobby is shades of gray. And what I mean by that is, is you will learn your own skills, your own techniques, and you'll get comfortable with the, with the way to do things. Uh, and you'll learn what glues react with plastic, uh, what paints react with plastics, enamels and acrylics, acrylic before enamel, enamel before acrylic. You'll learn all of those things, uh, sometimes by trial and error, and that's okay. Uh, and that's what makes this particular hobby, um, to me, so awesome, uh, because uh, there are no rules, um, and I love that. Okay, so... We are, we are flying here, and um, what I'm going to do, and uh, let, me, let me go to B and show you this on B because I think, I think it's fun. Um, we're, going to, we're going to pick the, some of the areas, and we're going to just hit them. And, um, and you're going to do this. Now, you do not have to have a steady hand. Don't worry about perfect lines because you don't need perfect lines what, you, what you're trying to achieve here is is a, a a sort of a shadowing effect that's what you're trying to do you're trying to um, uh, you're trying to you're, you're trying to get certain uh, certain sort of highs and lows to uh, to actually pop and I promise you, when you paint this with your next color, wow, you're going to see it. It's going to be awesome. And so you can see already, I'm starting to, uh, to, to build this, um, this sort of uh, artificial shadowing, as we call it. Um, now, um, in doing so, uh, you're, going to, you're going to... You're going to also be able to um, really have start to have some fun with the color palette, and um, I'm going on all of the raised areas, and I'm trying to get stuff in the raised areas because um, I don't know what part of this model people are going to be looking at or not looking at, um, and um, so. I'm just doing this. Now, forgive me because I don't chew gum. Um, I don't sort of rub my tummy and chew gum at the same time very well. But you can see, anyway, um, let me put my brush down. Y you can see this concept um, and uh, it starts to, to, to really add this sort of pre-shading to everything. Now, as you know, I've already got the insignia white on this. And uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to keep going and I'm just going to uh, pre-shade everything uh, and then we'll get a coat of white on it 
and then we'll take another look at this, okay? Now, in the ordinary course of things, uh, there's all kinds of versions of pre-shading. And uh, this is the one that I'm, I'm using, which is, you know, you're just literally putting, uh, you're putting some uh, black paint uh, on the various different shadows. Now, obviously the windows, uh, which we'll, um, we'll, we'll need to get another coat of paint because they are going to be black ultimately. Um, and then when those are really dry, I will cover them with uh, the, the Aztec dummy masks and um, we'll, uh, we'll be able to preserve the windows and then of course they'll stay black permanently. So uh, I'm gonna let this dry just, and then I will give it one more coat on the nose windows um, and let that dry. And then I'll give that a coat of varnish just to make sure that it's rock solid. Uh, and then I can apply uh, those, uh, those masks. Now bear in mind, you got to give this uh, quite some time. Uh, I like to give it 24 hours to really dry um, and then you're, you're good to go. Uh, but let, you know, with, with uh, the acrylics, with these uh, pre-shading, the nice thing about that is, is we can start to give our, uh, uh, our leg armatures here. This is what I'm calling them because I, I don't know, I don't know what else to call these. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the leg armatures, uh, what I'll do is, is I will give these, um, uh, a little bit to dry. But the nice thing, the nice thing about, uh, that is, is that, uh, the armatures themselves, you know, it's acrylic paint. It doesn't take a long time to dry. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out to you, because it's actually kind of fun, and I've learned this along the way, is sometimes you get, not always, but uh, with my airbrush today, uh, you didn't see it obviously, because I did it off camera, but I was getting, uh, I had to clean the brush anyway. You know, you've got to make sure your brush is, your airbrush is clean. Uh, but I was getting some splatter. Now, fear not, because what I've learned over the, over the years is, is that this, uh, this splatter, and I'm going to show you an example of what I mean. Uh, now, some of you might be cringing, but you know, some of you won't, and that's okay. Um, uh, here it is. Here's some splatter. Do you see this? Now, uh, I'll use this to my advantage, obviously. I'm going to paint this, and a lot of that, most of that will go away. But it creates an interesting kind of staining that um, you, don't really, uh, you, you don't really have to worry about because uh, in the end of the day, uh, the human eye doesn't see a lot of that stuff. So, but I've learned that it actually can be a good thing, not a bad thing. So, um, I tend to stick with it. Uh, but anyway, I am all pre-shaded here. I'm going to let all of this dry. Uh, I've got, obviously I'm, I'm letting my, um, <clears throat> my pod dry here. Um, it, it, uh, now obviously has, uh, it's starting to dry. I'm looking at it now and it's doing quite well. It's, it's, uh, it'll go crystal clear. So it'll be, you know, to, to your eye at first, you'll go, wait a minute, it didn't fill the gap, but <laughs> it does, it works great. And then I'll just hit this with a very light coat of my insignia white. Um, and I will be, I will be good to go because uh, when I've, uh, um, you know, got that nice and sealed, those gaps won't show. And that's a good thing. And then I can, uh, go to town on this in terms of getting uh, all the pre-shading done. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to um, I'm going to uh, uh, actually uh, put some washes on this varnish. But I've got to let this dry. I've only it, it's only been drying a, about 45 minutes to an hour. It needs overnight preferably, but that's what the next thing will do is, is what it'll allow me to do is uh, get my decals on and get some washes on this. Um, and again, you know, you're not going to see any of it, uh, but I will take photos of it for my website, which is spruverse.com. Check that out if, you, if, 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 uh, if you've not. Uh, and of course, I post uh, detailed pictures on Instagram. Uh, my, uh, I'm at Spruverse. So um, there you go. Uh, so I'm going to keep going with my pre-shading and I'm going to keep going um, with uh, getting the cockpit finished. 
and, and, and so then uh, we'll get a coat of white paint on this and uh, we should be able to um, we, we should be able to be going into the final stage of this thing um, and um, then it's just a function of you know getting everything uh, cleaned up and detailed um, again you know a little bit of seam work to deal with but nothing nothing terrible and as I put more and more paint on this some of these lighter seams have actually been disappearing uh, but we'll continue uh, to to work on this uh, so um, that will uh, will do it for this segment uh, I'm going to do one more final segment in this show uh, um, just to see the complete progress progress of this and I think a, a fourth episode uh, for the final finish and reveal um, and we should be done with the Eagle too. Lots of fun. Uh, hey, uh, momentous day for me. Um, I'm, um, I'm learning how to do a whole new uh, studio setup. Some of it to you will be, wow, who cares? And I respect that. <laughs> but for me, I'm a bit of a nerd and um, I'm just tickled pink. So anyway, um, come back uh, for the final segment of this and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what it looks like with uh, the next coat of paint on it. Okay. So um, just want to sort of show you what, what I've been doing here. Um, a lot of painting, obviously. Um, now everything is getting a, um, a coat of this which is the, uh, the Model Air. It's 71001, it's the white. And uh, so we're, um, we're sort of touching everything uh, just to see what things start to look like. And I have to say, um, it's pretty, ex it's exciting. This is, this is a part that I, I really start to get excited about because um, we, we, you can start to see uh, where um, my pre-shading has really paid off. Um, let me show you here. Uh, it doesn't look like much now, but this is the beginning of a beautiful relationship between me and this piece because we're going to start to get some washes and some silvers and coppers and details in here. And you'll see just a little bit of this through, uh, through the spines, but not a, uh, not a tremendous amount. And, uh, but, but the detail will be there. And when we take, um, take a close look at the final, final product, uh, it, it's just, it's really going to come alive. So, um, everything is going to, I'm going to let everything dry now. Um, I put the final, final black on the nose cone, um, here. And it's, 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 um, deliberately got a lot more of, of the black sort of overspray on it. And I did that for a, a, a reason because obviously as it flies, um, it's going to get hit by dust and dirt and everything else like that. Now it's going to get the same white as everything else and it will come out pretty white, but I really want some of those, those lines to pop. Um, and of course, you know, ultimately it'll all get a coat of gloss uh, so that we can get all the decals down and then it will get uh, a coat of matte uh, just to, to, to sort of kill it. Um, I do want to show you this because I was experimenting with something and I'm actually very, very happy with it. Uh, what I did was I deliberately got some overspray on this and uh, it's added a little bit of a stipple effect. You know, it's the kind of thing that you would have done uh, in, in the theater <laughs> when you're in high school. I don't know if you ever were in high school theater. Uh, I quit the football team to be in high school theater. That's a long story I'll, I'll tell you about one day. But um, you get this sort of speckling effect. And what it does to the eye is, is it creates a dimensionality. Uh, so um, anyway, um, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 pretty, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so um, it's, it's, it's kind of a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, there's gloss on there. Uh, we're going to let that thoroughly dry. It's going to get its, its, its decals and then that will be, uh, ready to go. So, uh, the next time we get together, um, everything, uh, I'll, I'll already start the decaling process, uh, because obviously, um, the, uh, hydrogen tanks and the, uh, the, the, the engine cooling system, uh, whatever you call it, uh, ne needs its decals before I can actually put them uh, back 
in, in, in the cages right here. Uh, so uh, that's the next thing that's going to happen is um, we're going to uh, sort of start to assemble some of these things and then these boxes can, uh, they can, you, you can start to install things. Um, I've got my leg pods drying. They've got a coat of white paint and I've got the um, the fuel tanks themselves drying, they've got a coat of paint and they're the ones that are going to uh, actually connect to these engine bells. Um, and I'm in love with these engine bells. They're beautifully turned. Now, as I said before, uh, we're going to get, uh, get them black on the inside, sooted up, and then we've got some all clad uh, uh, paints uh, for scorching, jet engine scorching, which we're, we're going to do on, on that. Um, and, and they'll look pretty neat. So it is all coming together. We're coming down to the final wire. And I think one more episode and we should be all done with Eagle 2. But um, this is the bit where I get really excited. I just, I love to paint and uh, I love to detail things. So um, um, I'm getting pretty excited about it. But anyway, I've gone on too long. Uh, and uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, forgive some of the, 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 the switching. Uh, I'm learning how to use my new system, but I promise you it's, it's going to make things so much better for all of us because you're going to be able to see more of my workflow process. Uh, we're going to be able to really dial in on some details. And uh, for that, I'm, I'm really, really excited. So anyway... Uh, until uh, next time, as always, everybody, please be safe, be well, uh, build something, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.